All right, we're back. Graveyard Shift Movie Podcast, episode number 158. And this week, uh, we're watching the movie that I wanted to watch last week. Uh, but it turns out that this movie just doesn't stream anywhere and it's almost impossible to get. Uh, but I managed to get my hands on the DVD. Uh, so I watched Near Dark from 1987. Uh, starring basically the entire uh, cast of Aliens, <laughs> which I learned. All I knew about this movie was uh, Bill Paxton was in it, and he looked really cool. Everything I had seen was him with a leather jacket and sunglasses with blood coming down his mouth and, like, a shotgun. Uh, and that's all I knew about the movie. That and the Vampire. That was what I had to, to go on. Um but then, upon uh, further, you know, looking around and stuff, I mean, it turns out Lance Hendrickson is in it, who he's Bishop in Aliens. He's also uh, Bishop in Alien vs. Predator uh, from 2004, which I think his character is supposed to be, like, a descendant from Bishop or something, but he's human, like, I don't, or it's some weird, yeah, he plays Charles Bishop in Alien vs. Predator, um, but it's just Bishop in Aliens, I don't remember if they ever gave him first name, but Lance Hendrickson's in it, and then, uh, Jeanette Goldstein, who plays Private Vasquez in Aliens, is in this movie, uh, so yeah, it's just a whole, which also, uh, if I, the, the lady who directed this, uh, Catherine Bigelow, uh, she's married to, or she was married to James Cameron, um, and I think supposedly the thing is, is when she was making this movie, uh, James Cameron was like, hey, how about you just use the guys I just used for, <laughs> for aliens, and she was like, alright, sounds good, uh, but anyway, Near Dark, I always, I, I kept hearing how good it was, and how cool it was, and stuff, um, yeah, and I'm gonna, yeah, it didn't, it didn't live, I'm gonna give it a six and a half out of ten, like, I thought it was good, uh, but it wasn't as cool <laughs> as I was hoping, uh, there's like a 20 minute stretch in this movie where I was like, alright, it's going exactly how I want it to go now, uh, but then it just kind of stops, and the ending is very abrupt, and it just seems like they were like, alright, we need... We need a way, spoiler, to, to kill the vampires. Let's just do this. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're <laughs> I guess we're done now. Um, but yeah, so it wasn't as cool as I wanted it to be. Uh, Bill Paxton and uh, the little kid vampire in this movie. Uh, the kid vampire's name is Homer, uh, which, you know... When did when did Simpsons come out? Was he named after Homer? <laughs> um, but yeah, Bill Paxton and Homer are definitely my favorite part of the movie. Uh, Lance Hendrickson playing Jesse is also very good. I enjoyed him a lot too. Uh, the weakest part of this movie to me is the two main characters, which is May and uh, and Caleb. Like Caleb is our our main character. Caleb, funny enough, since I couldn't watch Near Dark last week, I ended up watching a movie called Home Movie, and the guy who plays Caleb is the dad in Home Movie, uh, basically the main character in that movie, too. So he's in back-to-back -back weeks uh, as the star of the movie. Um, yeah, and I thought they were just the... I thought they were the weakest point of the movie. Um, I'm gonna, I would have much rather just liked... If they just made a movie that didn't have any plot, and it was just uh, the gang of vampires going around, like, causing mischief, like, I, I would have liked that a lot better than what I got, but it's not, it, it's fine, it's a good movie, um, it just wasn't what I hoped it would be, if that makes sense, um, yeah, so, also, they never say vampire, which people love to mention for some reason, uh, when I'm looking around at this movie, everything loves to be, you know, they never say vampire once in this vampire movie. And it's like, all right, well, you don't have to say vampire, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's cool, man. Um, but yeah, say so, hey, spoiler warning for near dark. 
1987. If you've never seen it before, uh, which it's very hard to see, so I understand totally if you haven't been able to watch it. Uh, I'm going to ruin everything about it, so you've been warned. Um, the first shot of this movie, we just get straight up animal cruelty, where it's just a mosquito, like, sucking some blood, and then this dude, like, smacks it and kills it, and I saw that apparently, and, you know, maybe I'm reading this wrong, uh, but since they realized they were gonna have to film a real mosquito interacting with an actor, they had, they, they had to grow it from scratch, so that there were no contaminants that the actor would be exposed to, or the uh, or the mosquito, or whatever, you know. So basically, no disease could somehow wind up to the actor, uh, and it became a six month process. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. Does that mean they grew a mosquito just to be like, oh, we got to use it so we can kill it on this thing? You know what I mean? So they bred a mosquito. Just to be able to uh, film that one shot of it getting smacked. So, that's pretty cool. Um, we got uh, the main character, Caleb, driving down the road, listening to some sick-ass music that's playing over the opening credits. Uh, driving around town. Um, he pulls up in front of like this bar gas station thing. Uh, where he meets his maybe friends that all they do is like insult each other when he gets out of the truck. Which I guess is kind of how, you know, friends interact. Um, they talk for like a minute or two. And then one of the friends is like, good lord, would you look behind you with that fine lady? Uh, this is how they all talk. It's a very southern town. Uh, and so Caleb turns around and he sees uh, what we'll learn is May down the road uh, eating an ice cream cone. And he's like, good lord. And he takes his hat off and, like, dusts his knee off and shit, you know. And he's like, yeehaw. And uh, so he goes to spit some game. He's like, I'm getting in that, you know. Um, so he goes over to her, starts talking to her. Uh, she's like, oh, you know, I'm staying at the old trailer park on the edge of town. You know, I could use a ride home. Uh, so he gives her a lift home. The whole time they're driving, he just keeps running his mouth off, asking her about, you know, you got a boyfriend, you know, what type of family, you know, just keeps talking and talking. And she keeps, like, looking up at the sky and stuff. Um, And eventually she just tells him to stop, like, dead in the middle of the road. And Caleb's like, here? And she's like, yeah. And I think dude thought that it was about to go down in the middle of the truck, like they were just going to start doing it. But she gets out of the truck. And is looking up into the sky. And is talking to him. Uh, and he's like, you know, you're, you're like no one I've ever met before. And she says, you see that star up there? It's a million years away. Uh, and by the time it would get here, I, I'll still be here. That's why I'm like no one you've ever met before. And he's like, uh-huh, that's pretty cool. And he just keeps like rubbing her arm and like trying to kiss her. <laughs> like this dude is super horned up in this opening, you know, them getting to know each other. Um, they get back in the truck, uh, and he then, like, goes away from her turn. She's like, where are you taking me, you know? And he's like, oh, trust me, I got, I got a surprise. And so he goes and takes her to his farm where he has a horse, uh, and he tries to show her the horse, but the horse just, like, gets spooked and runs away, and she's like, ah, oh, horses don't like me much. Uh, and then they just leave like that's the, or no, she's at first, she's like, what time is it? When's dawn? And he's like, I don't know. It's a couple hours off. And she's like, we got to go now. And she freaks out and like runs back to her truck. And so he gets in and starts driving her home. Uh, that horse scene is just in there. So later on we can remember, oh yeah, he has a horse and, uh, you know, explain why he'll get thrown off of said horse. Um, he gets in the truck. He drives her to, like, the very edge of where the trailer park is. And then he stops the car, and he's like, I'll take you the rest of the way, but you gotta kiss me first, you know? Uh, and so, she leans over. They start making out. It's all in slow-mo. There's tongues going everywhere and stuff. Uh, and eventually, she starts working her way over to the side of his neck. Uh, and once you know it, she, like, she doesn't really... It's a bite, 
but it doesn't like leave much impact, but it's enough to like get in there and draw blood. And he's like, ah, you know, uh, and she gets out of the truck and runs away and he goes to chase after her. But after a while, he just gives up and stops. Uh, he goes back to his truck to start it up. Um, but the truck's dead somehow now it just won't start. So he starts to walk home. Uh, and as he's walking home, he just starts to like stumble and fall and he's like limping. And then a really cool effect that they do a lot throughout this movie, um, is he just starts smoking like his, (laughs) there's just smoke like a chimney coming off of him as he's trying to get home because the sun is coming up. Um, he's almost home. So, so close to home. In fact, that his little sister and his dad are outside and they see him coming up up and they're like, Oh man, he looks sick, you know, but before he can get there, a RV that's decked out, like got all the windows blocked out and there's only like a sliver of a windshield that's available for them to see comes driving in front of him and they just like swoop in front and grab him and throw him inside and go driving off. And the sister and the dad like run after them to try to stop him. Uh, but it, it's an RV. They're not getting anywhere, you know. Turns out that in this RV is our main cast of vampires. Uh, Bill Paxton has Caleb down on the ground. Uh, and he's got like, he's got these boots with these stirs on the back. Uh, not stirs, spurs. I don't know why I said stirs. <laughs> I think I was thinking stirrup for some reason. I mixed the word. Uh, But he's got these spurs, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to peel your face off, motherfucker. Uh, And he's real aggressive and stuff. And uh, Jesse, who is basically the head vampire, Lance Hendrickson, is driving, and he's telling May, he's like, you really messed this one up, you know? Uh, And they're going to kill him, presumably because she gave away, like, oh, I'm a vampire, so you have to kill him to make sure he doesn't tell anyone. But... She comes to his rescue and tells him that she just bit him. Uh, she didn't drain him. So that means he's already turned now. He's one of us. Uh, and I guess in vampire rules, that's they're like, oh, shit. They're like, he, you know, we got to take him with us now. <laughs> uh, and so they just take Caleb with them. And they pull into this abandoned warehouse. Uh, and everyone, like, just goes to sleep. Uh, Caleb... And May are, like, cuddled up in the corner with, like, a blanket. And he seems to be taking all this very well. I thought he was very calm for everything that was happening. Um, I think we'll learn, like, I think this was him. He was just so out of it at this point, like, everything that was happening to his body. Uh, But it was very weird how calm he was during all this. Uh, So everyone wakes up. And they go around the room introducing themselves. Bill Paxton plays uh, Severin is his name. But I will be calling him Bill Paxton the entire time. Uh, the little kid. or no, The little kid just comes up and grabs Caleb by the dick. And he's like, my name's Homer. H-O-M-E-R. Get it wrong and you'll have problems. And I was like, yo, if you keep holding on to this dude's dick, you're going to have problems. This is child molestation going on. But the child is doing the molesting. That's the way of the world, folks. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's Homer. Uh, Lance Hendrickson is Jesse. And uh, Private Vasquez plays Diamondback. I'm pretty sure it was her name. And then, of course, there's May that you know he already met. Um, so it gets dark again. Uh, they go to a car dealership and they steal a car. Uh, and they torch the RV uh, pres- presumably because the, the sister and the dad saw them drive off in it. So it's a crime, you know, the police will be looking for it if they come looking for Caleb. So they burn that and they steal another car. Um, and they drive to like another city, it seems like. And they just park in like this train station. Uh, and then everyone just splits up and Caleb's like, I'm going to go home now. And May's like, all right, well, you know, you're not going to be able to, but good luck. And yeah, everyone just splits up. <laughs> I was like, is this, what's going on here? It'll end up being like, uh, I guess it's feeding time and they were all splitting up to go, you know, feed. Uh, so Caleb goes walking towards a bus station. Uh, he's all gimped up. He's still limping and stuff. He, he's all slimy. There's like sludge on the side of the head. I'm not sure where it came from, but he just looks gross. Uh, he goes to a bus stop, 
Uh, he asked for, you know, a ticket to wherever the fuck his town was. Um, the dude's like, it's $14 for a bus ticket. But, of course, Caleb only has 11 and the guy won't spot him $3. Uh, so Caleb goes over and buys a candy bar from a vending machine, and he goes to eat it, but it, like, makes him throw up. That's classic vampire stuff where you eat something, but all you can have now is, like, blood, so it just makes you vomit and stuff. Uh, this causes, uh, Caleb to get noticed by this guy who's standing in the corner who walks over. Turns out he's a cop, and he's like, what are you on, boy, you know? And Caleb's like, I, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Uh, and the cop notices blood stains on Caleb's shirt from where May bit him, and he's like, you got blood here. And Caleb's like, yeah, I cut myself, you know? Uh, and then he's like, can I get $3 for the bus ticket? I, I, I just need a bus ticket. And, uh, the cop just lets him go, which I thought was kind of weird. I mean, you you got this guy all drugged up and there's blood on him, uh, and you're just letting him go. But I guess the cop just didn't want to deal with it. So he's like, here, take your, take the money and get out of here. Um, Caleb gets on the bus, but he like is feeling like shit. He's like foaming at the mouth. It looked like at one point. And he's, like, walking around on the bus, like, you know? Uh, and I guess they're just tired of him being on the bus, so they just kick him off uh, in the middle of the road. Uh, and it ends up being that he is just right back to where uh, May and them parked the car at that train station. And he goes walking in and, like, falls on his knees in front of her. Uh, and she takes him and she cuts her wrist. And she's like, here, eat this. Uh, and so then he's just like slurping the shit out of her wrist. He's just like, mm, you know, um, and this puts him in a great mood and he's like, I feel great. Let's go running now. And <laughs> it's just, it's just one of those stupid eighties movies that, that where it's like this, everyone's happy now. So like the guy and the girl just hold hands and they just run around and it's like, that's not what you, you get tired. That's not what you do. Um, so yeah, they go running around having a good time, you know? Uh, Caleb stops at a phone booth, tries to call his, uh, his parent, his parent, yeah, not parents, they never mention a mom in this movie, the mom's just not around, I don't know what the deal is with that, uh, he tries to call home, but no one answers, and throughout the movie, we've gotten little updates about, uh, Caleb's dad and sister going to the police and trying to find him, and they've been out looking for him, so that's why no one answers the phone, um, May comes over to him and she's like listen you know we can do whatever we want now till the end of time uh you know this is a, this is our lifestyle but she tells him you know the only way you can keep living is you have to do you know you have to get blood and he's like i'm not a killer i'm not gonna eat people and she's telling him you know don't think about it as killing or eating people just to, you know it's what you have to do uh, and as she's talking, we see the other members of the vampire gang. The little kid has, like, set up a trap where he's, like, falling over in the middle of the street on his bike. So this old guy gets out and comes running over to check on him. And the guy, you know, he jumps on him and latches onto his neck. Uh, Bill Paxton is just, like, hitchhiking on the side of the road. And these two girls pull over. And he puts on his Bill Paxton charm. And he's like, how about I buy you two ladies a drink? And they're like, yeehaw, you know. Uh, and then we see Diamondback and Jesse driving around town, like, reminiscing about how they first met, where we get a little backstory about how Jesse's the one that turned Diamondback, uh, he was pretending to be a hitchhiker, and she pulled over, and he turned her, uh, and as they're talking, they see a hitchhiker in the road, and they pull over to let him in, uh, but it ends up being a classic Old West uh, you know, c c can I get a ride home, stranger? And then as soon as you stop, there's a gang of them that come out. Because the guy gets in and he pulls out a gun. And he's like, ah, oh, we, we got you now. And then this other dude comes out of a bush with a gun. And he's pointing at Jesse. And Jesse's like, ah, oh, you two are going to look real good with your faces peeled off, you know. Uh, and we, we cut away. And we never see, you know, we don't see either Bill uh, Paxson or Jesse and them, like, kill their people, but we get what's going on, you know, um, so then we go back to Caleb and May, uh, who are sitting in this semi-truck with this truck driver, uh, and this truck driver, I don't know what he's on, 
but he is just bouncing all over the place. He is so excited, and he is literally jumping up and down in his seat and, like, talking, you know, telling, oh, you got this one for the clutch and this one for the, you know. Um, and honestly, this is a really cool scene that I really liked because they're here to kill this guy. That's what they're here for. And May wants Caleb to kill him. She wants him to, you know, accept what he is and what he needs to do. And so as the scene goes on, you know, further on, Caleb, like, gradually his breathing gets heavier and he starts getting more anxious and he's rocking back and forth. And it's like a steady build to like, all right, when is this going to all culminate in what he has to do? Uh, and eventually he like stops and stares at the guy and the guy's like, are you, you all right? You know? Uh, but before Caleb jump, he's just like, I can't. And he's, he starts jumping out of the truck and the guy stops the truck. Caleb gets out and he's like throwing up, uh, because, he is still sick and his body's all, you know, he needs food, but it's still, it's like the anxiousness that he had building up inside him. Uh, the truck driver gets out to check on him, but as he's checking on him, May sneaks up behind him and latches onto his neck uh, and kills the truck driver. And then we cut to May feeding um, Caleb from her wrist again. Uh, he's slurping it down and she has to like pull him away and she tells him like, you could kill me by drinking too much and stuff, but he's just on like that blood high. And so he's smiling. I don't think he registers what she said. I did write that down in my notes cause I thought that might come back. Uh, but it didn't, there is something that maybe I guess could have been like attributed to that. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. That just might be me, which I'll talk about when we get to it. Might just be me trying to connect dots. Um, so all the vampires meet up again. And it turns out that not only did, you know, Caleb need to feed, but this was also, like, his initiation. This was how they were gonna, you know, be like, alright, you're one of us now. And so they're all pissed that he didn't kill anybody. Uh, because they're like, you know, you're not one of us and stuff. Um... So they tell him they're going to give him one more night to kill someone or else he's going to die. Uh, the kid, <laughs> the kid has a line here where he goes, yeah, I hope he, or why are we wasting our time? He's not going to do it. Plus he's so fucking ugly. He makes my gums hurt. I hope he dies. And <laughs> that made me laugh. Usually, like I'm telling you guys, usually a kid actor is like the worst part of a movie, but this kid was killing it. Like I loved them the whole movie. Um, they then that night uh, go to this bar that's just like in the middle of nowhere. It looks like the bar from an American Werewolf in London that's just like in the middle of a field in the in the middle of nowhere, you know. Uh, and there's a cool shot of them like up on the hill looking down at the bar, and there's like mist uh, and the moon silhouetting them, and it's really cool. Uh, they walk into the bar, and immediately Bill Paxton. Just like sits down at the bar and just starts picking a fight with the dude sitting next to him. Um, and he's like, he spills his drink. Uh, he tells the bartender to give him another one, you know. But then Bill Paxton just takes the shot and and takes it for himself and spits it in the guy's face. Um, there's a point here where he's like talking shit. And uh, he's like, what, my my Hannibal Lecter? And he takes the beer that has, like, the beer foam on top. And he just dips the foam in his chin and puts the beer back down. It was very odd, but it was very funny. Um, also, another little fun fact here. So, there's a... there's a f uh, You've probably heard this one before. Bill Paxton's the only actor to ever be killed by a Predator, a Xenomorph, and a Terminator. Um... Bill Paxton was in The Terminator, the first one. He was part of that punk gang uh, that when uh, Arnold shows up, he's like, give me your coat, you know, and he gets the the, the coat. Um, and Bill Paxton was like the guy with the blue hair. Uh, and so I'll probably put in like a clip we'll be playing here. Hey, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. You're close. Give them to me now. Fuck you, asshole. Uh, where you could see him. But yeah, so he gets killed by the Terminator. Obviously, aliens. He gets killed by a Xenomorph. Um, and then he's in Predator 2, and he gets killed by a Predator. Uh, the guy that Bill Paxton picks the fight with, with when he first walks in is the guy who in the Terminator 2 is the biker dude 
who uh, Arnold is like, I'll give me your boots and your motorcycle, you know? Uh, and th- and so, yeah, they, they have this v- weird connection, once again, uh, where these two guys were both killed by a Terminator, uh, and I thought that was cool. Um, also, I just wanted to mention that uh, the guy who plays the dad in this movie, because I won't be mentioning him a lot, because he's one of the least interesting parts of the character, but he voices uh, Cyrus in uh, the Saints Row franchise, um, and I thought that was cool. Uh, I also saw that Ginny Wright, who plays May, when I looked up her movies, it was Near Dark, was first listed, and then right after that was Pink Floyd's The Wall, where she played American Groupie. So, <laughs> so that's cool. Um, yeah, so they go in this bar, uh, you know, he he's messing with everybody. Uh, when he spits the drink in the guy's face, the guy gets up to fight him. Uh, and Bill Paxton just takes Caleb, who's sitting there all fucked up looking, and moves him in front of him, and he's like, punch him. And the guy's like, what? And he's like, I'm trying to teach him a lesson. And so the guy just doesn't hesitate. He just starts punching the shit out of Caleb for no reason. Caleb did nothing to him. Uh, so finally, Bill Paxton lets Caleb go, and he's like, ah, man, you gonna let him do that to you? And so Caleb just, like, uppercuts this dude and sends him flying into the pool table. And then he goes, did I do that? And all the vampires find that very funny uh, when he says that. Uh, The vampire is sitting over the table. The waitress comes over to talk to him. uh, And as she's talking, uh, Diamondback just gets up and slits her neck with a switchblade as she's standing there. And they drain her blood into this cup to drink. Uh, The little kid is just sitting on the table. And he's just like gyrating to the music and singing and stuff. Um... Also, they didn't show the next slice, and it seems like they should. So I don't know if the DVD I have, like, they cut stuff out of it or something. Also, I thought I was going to die watching it because some shots, the DVD, the film would just, like, uh, pulsate. Like, it was fucked up, and it would just pulsate at you. Uh, And so for, like, a minute or two, it would pulsate, and you'd be like, please, God, stop before I get a headache. Um, Bill Paxton goes back over. To this dude who's wearing, uh, like, these sunglasses and stuff. And the guy pulls a switchblade on him. Uh, and Bill Paxton's like, ah, oh, that, that shit ain't gonna do nothing to you. Uh, and he just takes the guy by the head. And uh, he just snaps his neck. Like, just breaks it. He also steals the guy's sunglasses. This is where he gets the, the sunglasses from uh, that we see. Uh, the jukebox then starts playing uh, the Cramps Fever. And I was very happy, excited to hear that. Um, Caleb stands up from the bar and the bartender, once again, the bartender has a double barrel and he just shoots Caleb straight in the gut. And, uh, when the movie does show gore, it's very good gore. The practical effects in the movie are very good, uh, when it does. And so it shows him get shot and you see like a little bit like Oregon hanging out and stuff. Uh, and he has a great reaction, even though I said he was the weakest point in the movie. He has one where he just looks down and he's, like, holy shit, holy shit. And his voice gets really high. Um, <laughs> this is a kick, ain't it? Holy shit. Holy shit. And, but he really, he's like, oh, I'm all right, you know? And, uh, Bill Paxton's like, don't worry, I got this one. And he jumps up on the, uh, bar top and he goes over to the bartender and takes his spur, uh, boot and just goes back and forth in a kicking motion and just cuts the guy's throat in a bunch of different ways. Uh, it's really cool. Um, the dude that Caleb punched earlier and got knocked out wakes up and he tries to make a run for it. Uh, But they stop him at the door, and then the little kid just shoots him in the back a bunch with a pistol. Um, And so then there's one dude left at the back of the bar who's, like, the youngest guy there who's just been at the pool table. Uh, And May goes over to him and starts dancing with him. This is when we get, like, the, I think, the picture of Bill Paxton that I talked about where he's standing there with a shotgun on his shoulder, like, smiling with the blood on his face and the sunglasses. Uh, 
And she goes over there dancing, and I kind of think she was dancing with him to make Caleb jealous to try to get him, you know, put more incentive on him to want to kill this guy. Uh, Caleb eventually does walk over to him, and she's like, this one's for you, Caleb. And the guy goes, no, and he just dives head first out of a window. The music hard cuts when he jumps out of the window. It was very funny. Uh, and then Caleb goes chasing after him. Um, as he's chasing after him, the vampire crew light up a bunch of Molotovs and they burn down the bar. They also set uh, like their old car on fire and they steal the van from the that was outside of this bar. Uh, Caleb eventually catches the dude, but he just holds him for a while and then he lets him go. He's like, I can't do it, you know. Uh, so they grab Caleb and shove him in the van. And they're like, we're going to kill you. You let us down. Uh, that guy's going to run and talk to the police. And they're going to be coming looking exactly for this van. And the sun's coming up. Uh, you know, you've caught, you've, you've ruined everything. Uh, but they don't have time to deal with it because the sun is coming up. So they have to try to get somewhere where they can hide uh, from the sun. Um, this is at the point, too, where I was like, oh, man. The whole movie, I just kept being like, Come on, Caleb, just be part of the vampire gang. Like, it looks so cozy. Everyone was having a great time. Uh, I would I would be a terrible... Like, all these movies we watch, the main character always, like, resists. And he's like, no, I won't fall into that trap. And the second I'm a vampire, and they're like, you gotta kill someone. I'm like, whatever you cool people want me to do. <laughs> I'm just, like, munching on a neck, dude. Um, so they go to this hotel... Or, I guess you can call it a hotel. It's like a... It's not really a hotel because there's just a bunch of separate bungalows that people rent. Uh, and Jesse rents a bungalow. There's a cool little moment here where... Um, at least I liked it. Where the guy who runs the hotel is like... Haven't I seen you before? Didn't you come through here like years ago? Like a long time? And uh, Jesse's like, yeah, I come around here every 50 years or so. Um... They go to their bungalow, they, you know, go to sleep, everyone's sleeping, uh, and then in the middle of the day, they get a bunch of loud knocks on their door, and it ends up being the police, uh, and the police found their van, we see the kid that Caleb let go, like, sitting in the police car outside, um, Bill Paxton sneaks a peek, like, behind the curtain, and his face just immediately gets burned, uh, the burn effects in this movie are great, uh, it just immediately is, like, charred his face, um, they start panicking. They're like, this is it. We're all going to die. You know, it's sunny. The cops are here. Um, They have a bag of guns. They just start passing around guns to each other. They also all put on these goggles, which I don't know why they put it. The only thing I can think of is I guess they can afford to be burnt on their body some. But if you they get burnt on their eyes, they can't see where they're shooting. So uh, the goggles help with that. That's what I, that's what I'm assuming, you know. Um... And then they're all loaded up. Bill Paxton has his shotgun and he goes, check out time. And he just shoots through the front door and just blows apart this uh, cop's chest. It was really cool. Check out time. Uh, and they just start shooting. Um, the effect is really good when, because uh, all the cops are just mowing through this bungalow, so different rays of light are just coming through where the bullet holes have come through. Uh, I also, every time the vampires stick out their hands to like shoot, they're just screaming in pain because they're being burned at the same time, you know? Um, eventually they realize like, oh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna die. So Caleb decides to make a run for their van that's out front, uh... And they're like, whatever, you know, you do you. So he jumps through the window and takes, like, the curtain with him to cover up his body. Uh, as he's running, he just keeps getting shot by this police sniper, like, in his leg and in his back and stuff. Uh, and he eventually drops the curtain, so he's just on fire. By the time he gets to the van, he is fully on fire when he's getting in and, like, completely burnt to a toast. What? What? Burnt to a toast. <laughs> Burnt to a crisp. Uh, but he manages to get into the van and drive it into the bungalow. Uh, and everyone loads up inside and they all drive away. Everyone, The van, as it's driving away, is smoking from everyone's burning flesh. Everyone's all black and charred and stuff. Um, 
And as they're driving, everyone's like laughing and hooting and hollering. And Jesse even gives Caleb like a hand smack and stuff. And I was like, man, Jesse, just kill people. Join the cool group, man. You want to do it. Uh, they drop off the van eventually and pick up a new car. Um, they eventually stop at another hotel. This was the first point in the movie that I noticed Jesse has this extremely long rat tail uh, at the back of his head, which I hadn't seen before. Um, everyone in here is having a good time. They're, like, playing cards and stuff. Uh, they all tell Jesse, like, you did really good. Or not Jesse. Caleb, you did really good. Uh, the little kid comes over and even and gives Caleb a handshake. Bill Paxton takes off one of his spurs and gives it to uh, Caleb, you know. And, and May's like, oh, man, it feels like you're really one of us now, you know. Uh, Jesse asks, or no, uh, Caleb asks Jesse how old he is, and Jesse says, well, let's just put it this way, I fought for the South, and I was like, oh, goddamn. <laughs> um, so everyone's just kind of vibing, having their own thing, uh, Caleb and May go off, like, walking around, um, Homer goes outside to smoke a cigarette, uh, when he goes around the corner, we see a little girl at a vending machine getting a Coke, uh, and it ends up being... Caleb's little sister, who they've been looking for in this whole movie, uh, it just so happens that they stopped at the same hotel that they're at. Uh, I guess Homer wants like a little girl friend or girlfriend. It's very weird because you don't know how old this kid is, uh, but he's a vampire, so he could be like sixty, really. Uh, and it clearly seems like he's trying to like keep this girl for his own. So it's very weird, like age wise, you know. Uh, it's kind of like Robert Pattinson being a thousand-year-old vampire dating a high schooler. Uh, but, you know, I, I digress. <laughs> um, so uh, he takes uh, the little sister back to his room and introduces him to all the vampires in there. Um, right as uh, Sarah, that's the little sister, tries to leave, uh, that's when... Caleb and May come walking back in and he's like, oh, Sarah, what are you doing here? And once again, she's like, I should punch your lights out, you know? Uh, and I feel like after you presume your brother has been dead for however many days he's been gone and you find him, uh, like, I feel like she would be a little softer reaction, but she's like, no, nah, I should punch you in your face, you know? Um, so, yeah, they reunite just in time for Bill Paxton to walk in with uh, Caleb's dad because they went to go find the dad when uh, the little girl told her what room they stayed in, you know. Um, so Caleb is like, you know, he, he's like, listen, these are this is my family. Just let him go. It's fine, you know. Uh, but Homer is, like, fully committed to keeping Sarah around now. So he's like, no, they, they don't go anywhere. And so all of a sudden, it starts being like Homer grabs Sarah and pulls her to him. Uh, Caleb threatens um, Homer, and Diamondback gets mad. I think Diamondback might have been the one to turn Homer. Because uh, she kind of acts like a mom to him throughout the whole movie. Um, so everyone's yelling. The dad eventually pulls out a gun out of nowhere. Uh, and Jesse's like, put that away. It won't do anything, you know. Uh, but the dad doesn't listen to him. He shoots him in the chest and it doesn't do anything, you know. So Jesse takes the gun from him. Uh, Sarah manages to get loose and she runs outside and opens up the door. And it's daytime now. So everyone starts getting burnt. Uh, so the dad and the little sister jump in the car and Caleb follows them. Uh, and he like wraps himself in a blanket and jumps in the back of the car. Uh, and they go driving off. The dad wants to take Caleb to a hospital. Uh, but Caleb's like, no, I'll die if we go to the hospital. You just need to take me home. Uh, and they go home, and then uh, Caleb's dad just gives him a blood transfusion, where I guess he just takes out the vampire blood and puts in normal blood. Uh, and when the sun comes back up, uh, Caleb is healed. He's not a vampire anymore. Uh, he goes out in the sun, and he, like, runs around, and he's all happy. This reminds, there's, a, uh, there's a season of True Blood where, like, the vampires get, like, this god vampire blood that makes them immune to the sun. And so that all the vampires, like, go out and, like, party in the sun and stuff. Uh, and that's what this reminded me of. Um, yeah, so later that night, or a couple nights later, they're having dinner. 
Uh, and as they're having dinner, Caleb hears like the outside swing like squeaking. So he goes out to check what's going on. Uh, and he sees May out there and May comes running over to him and they like hug and stuff. And he's like, oh, I missed you. And she's like, why did you leave? And he says, you know, this is my family. Uh, and as she's hugging him, she really, she's like, you're warm. And she realizes that he's not like, she's, he's not her anymore. Uh, he's not one of them. Um, so she goes running away. Caleb goes back inside and he goes upstairs and he goes to his little sister's room and we see that her window is open and she is missing. Uh, so presumably Homer came and took her. Uh, he goes outside and sees that both of all his tires on both of the cars have been shredded. Uh, so he goes over to the horse that we introduced at the very beginning of the movie and gets on the horse and goes riding off in the town. Uh, Caleb goes riding. It's, it's like deserted. It's dark and stuff. Um, he goes right into town, but the next thing you know, Bill Paxton just jumps out in front of him, so it spooks the horse, and the horse throws him off, and the horse goes running away. That's why we got that little scene with, uh, you know, him introducing the horse to May earlier. Uh, Bill Paxton, like, picks him up and just throws him across the street, and he's telling him, you know, I want my spur back, and you let me down, and all this stuff. Uh, the semi-truck is coming through town. And Caleb runs over to the semi truck and stops him. And he's like, we got to get out of here. We're in danger. And the the truck driver is like, listen, I'm going to give you to the count of five to get off of my truck. One, two, four. And then he gets shot in the head. And I just love the way he said four. One, two. Uh, it ends up being Bill Paxson. Bill Paxson had a gun, so he just shot the guy in the head. Uh, Caleb just throws the guy out of the truck and takes the semi truck and just runs over Bill Paxton, uh, but Bill Paxton's a vampire, so he ends up crawling up onto the hood of the car, and like half of his body has just been shredded of all the skin, and it's just like exposed, it's just bloody and messy, it looks super cool, um, Bill Paxton like starts punching into the engine and like ripping out spark plugs and stuff, uh, and as he's doing this, eventually Caleb just like gets a brake ready and twists the, 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 the wheel and jumps out and sends the truck like careening where it blows up, uh, with Bill Paxton on it and Bill Paxton's spur comes flying out of the wreckage. Uh, and Bill Paxton is, I guess, dead, even though, you know, that's how you kill a vampire, I guess. It's just by blowing them up. Um, so, I don't know if it was just me, by the way. There is a moment where Caleb's looking at the wreckage and he takes off his hat. And, like, you know, and I was like, oh, man, he's showing respect for Bill Paxton. But I don't know if he really was. I just like to believe he was. Um, so, unfortunately, though, Caleb's not done because he looks up at the end of the street now. And Jesse and Diamondback are standing there. Uh, and Or, no, Jesse and May are standing there. And uh, his little sister and Homer are, are inside the car. Um... Caleb comes walking over to him. He's like, let my sister go, you know. Uh, but they're like, you know, Jesse's like, nah, we ain't letting your sister go. As he's saying this, Diamondback comes sneaking up behind him with a knife. And she's coming to, she's going to throw it into his head. Uh, his little sister manages to get loose just enough to come out and warn him, you know, to duck. And so he ducks and she throws the knife and it goes into Jesse's mouth and like sticks in the back of his throat. And he pulls it out and he's like bleeding and stuff. Um... Caleb grabs his little sister and they go running off. Uh, Jesse goes to shoot Caleb, um, but he just like, or uh, May like knocks his arm out of the way so he doesn't shoot him. Uh, they all get into the car and they go chasing after Caleb and the sister. Uh, Caleb like falls over in this field and the sister goes running without him and the car pulls up and takes her and gets her again and now she's in the car but you never see this you just hear her yell and then you hear the car pull up and the door slam shut and then we see the car drive off so it's like they didn't film the scene of actually showing the abduction uh and so they just like added sound effects in post like it was very weird um so the sun is coming up now and they're driving trying to block out the sun they're all burning 
May decides she's had enough of this, so she grabs the little sister and jumps out the back window of the car uh, and goes running towards Caleb. Homer jumps out and goes following her, uh, and this is the only time where they added in like over, uh, like an over the layer of fire on his body because it's not really him like burn. Before it's been very practical fire effects, and this is like very fake looking, uh, and you know it kind of sucks. Uh, but Homer goes chasing after them. Um, May manages to get to Caleb so he can put like a hat and a blanket over her so she's not getting as burnt. Uh, Homer just blows up. Apparently vampires in this movie just explode whenever they eventually have too much fire. Uh, Jesse and Diamondback turn their car around and start to floor it and presumably are coming to run over Caleb and them. Uh, but they're getting like super burned up. Diamondback like has a line where she's like, fun times, you know? Uh, and then slowly the, the car just kind of moves to the left. Uh, and then the whole car blows up. Because Diamondback and Jesse blew up inside of it. Um, so yeah, they all die. We then go over to May, who they have home now. And they did the blood transfusion thing on her. So she, the sun hits her and she's alright because she's not a vampire anymore. Uh, and then they hug and we get a classic freeze frame on their hug to end near dark. Uh, this movie had a box or a budget of five million dollars, made a box office of three point four million dollars. Um, apparently, they wanted an, the ending to be like uh, they were going to celebrate, and uh, you know they were all going to walk out into the sun. But then Sarah, the little sister, her hand was going to start burning. To be like, oh, she got bit. She's a vampire. But then they realized, oh, well, it they would just do another blood transfusion. Like, it wouldn't mean anything. So they just scratched it. Which I was like, yeah, you kind of painted yourself into a corner with that. Uh, also, it just seems weird. Like, the dad just disappears in that final act and does nothing. Uh, you know, not a cool, like, entrance on a horse with a gun. You know, nothing. he doesn't get killed or nothing. He just sort of stays home. Uh, you know, so that's that's kind of disappointing. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it wasn't as cool as I hoped. It's not a bad movie by any means. It's good. I would, yeah, it's good. Um, the 20 minute period of like, uh, them in the truck drive in the truck with that guy and trying to get him to kill the truck driver, uh, and not being able to going into the bar and then into the bungalow, uh, where they all drive off was so good. And I loved it. Uh, and I wish more of the movie could have been like that. Uh, the ending, like I said, felt really flat to me. They just kind of all burn up and die. And, like, they don't... Caleb doesn't have to do anything, like, smart to get them to do it. They just kind of kill themselves. Like, with their own greed or anger. Um, and really, yeah, it all could have been prevented uh, if they would have just let Caleb go with his family after that. They could have all been off doing their own thing still. Uh, but they, you know, stubborn and they got themselves, you know, killed. But, uh, but yeah, I would recommend it. Go check it out. If you can watch it somewhere. Once again, it's very hard to find. Uh, Bill Paxson, great in it. Lance Hendrickson, great in it. The, whoever played that little kid, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Great in it. Uh, if you can get past the Caleb and May <laughs> sappy storyline stuff going on. Uh, there's some cool stuff in there. So, there you go. Uh, and I think that's about it for Near Dark. Um, next week, I don't know what we're watching, but, you know, come back. I'll, I'll be here. We'll watch something. Uh, besides that, go check out the gaming channel. Uh, me and Maverick have been plowing through the, the Saints, Saints Row game, the new one. Uh, and boy, is it a pile of shit. Uh, it breaks every 10 minutes. It is hard to get through. And we are killing ourselves to try to finish it. Uh, so a video of that will be coming out soon. Um, yeah, we got we, yeah. There's a whole bunch of other shit. Um, so go on over there. Uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, I will see you guys next week for whatever we watch. Bye bye.